Rose Garden here in Portland, Oregon. Square Ring Incorporated and Jordan Brand, a division of Nike, are proud to present the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the undisputed light heavyweight championship of the world. Brought you in association with Dennis Hobson Promotions and sanctioned by the Oregon State Police Boxing Commission. Executive Director, Mr. Jim Cassidy. The three judges assigned to ringside scoring this bout on the 10-point must system will be Gus Mercurio, Omar Mintoon, and Jack Woodburn. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Jay Nady. And now, ladies and gentlemen, with dedication, to the victims and heroes of 9-11-2001, for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing first, hiding out of the blue corner, wearing white with red and blue, and officially weighing in at 174 pounds. His professional record, an outstanding one, consisting of 32 victories, including 19 knockouts, with only one defeat. Tonight, he comes to the ring ready to shock the world. Ladies and gentlemen, from the steel city of the UK, he's the pride of Sheffield, England, the former WBC international champion, former European champion, and two-time British Commonwealth champion. Here is the WBC number one ranked light heavyweight contender in the world, Clinton. And fighting out of the red corner, wearing navy blue, and officially weighing 174 and three quarter pounds. Since being named the best boxer of the 1988 Olympics, he now has a professional record of 46 victories, including 37 knockouts. His only loss, a disqualification, avenged by first round KO in a rematch, places him among the elite in boxing history as a man to have defeated every opponent he has ever faced. And he is the consensus pound for pound best boxer in the world of the past decade. From Pensacola, Florida, the four time world champion, former middleweight, former super middleweight, and the two time reigning, defending, undisputed light heavyweight champion of the world. Roy Jones Jr. Okay, guys, I want you to know that the ring is a little bit uneven here. So you might want to walk around here. Also, I want to take a minute to clean up all this mess that came down out of the ceiling. So I want to send you back to your corners. Do you have any questions? Go ahead, button the hip bone. Good luck. I, I, yeah, I got someone to help me clean this shit up. Large size confetti cluttering the ring. Someone mm -hmm. could slip on it. You know, it's strange that Roy Jones doesn't have any sweat on his back. Chest is pretty dry. That could be an opening if Woods is ready to take it. Part of Roy Jones' genius is that he creates such low expectations for serious competition that virtually anything that happens can surprise us. What will it be tonight? Well, in his last fight against Glenn Kelly, he earned kudos by knocking Kelly out with his hands behind his back. You may recall him putting his hands behind his back, grabbing the ropes in Miami, and then 
literally popping off the ropes with the one straight shot that dumped Kelly on his back. Round one begins with Clinton Woods trying to do what he said he'd do and swarm Jones. Now he feels Jones' speed and power for the first time. Got to be a shocking experience. With his long torso, you wonder whether he's vulnerable to a body punch. Jones having stopped several opponents with body punches. He's going right after Roy Jones, Jr. He's getting him up against the rope. That's what you want to do, go to his body, hit him one shot at a time. Don't try to finish it all in one round. When, he, when we met with Woods yesterday, and he said, I'm going to swarm Jones, I'm going to attack him, I'm going to go at him. I looked at him and said, you know, Glenn Kelly said the same thing. And he said, yeah, but that's not Glenn Kelly's style. Glenn Kelly's a boxer. He was trying to do something he can't do. This is all I do is swarm people. So maybe he will do better than Kelly did. Well, if he does swarm, though, that will leave him open for Jones's fast hands and combinations. He's going to get picked apart by Jones's fast hands at any distance. Woods got in a right hand there. Sneaked it through Jones's guard. It's going to take Jones a moment because he didn't come out. Warm up, up, you know. Yep. You're going to catch a lot of shots until they get warm. Stop! Stop! You keep your head up. Box. <laughs> Michael Moore was dry against David Tua in Atlantic City a few weeks ago, and he was gone in the first round as a partial result. <laughs> Jones with a big left hook. Many fighters have come out determined to do what Woods is determined to do. But soon enough, as they catch punches like that, they lose their will to come forward. Jones hot shotting Clint Woods. Woods resolutely pressing forward. Hangs Jones into the ropes and lands one to the body. Is there a spot of blood on Woods' nose? That's 10 seconds. Hard to say. It could be just that it's red. The left hook. Does a lot of dazzling things in there. Round one, Jones 17 out of 38, 45%. Woods 7 out of 32. Jones mostly power shots, of course. <laughs> now Jones seems to begin to warm up and throws punches more frequently. Suddenly decides to jab. <laughs> One thing about Jones, you can't worry about what people say about your opponent. When you're in with a fighter like Woods, you better try to get it over with. Don't try to create 12 rounds of trouble for yourself. I asked him how Woods compared to another previous opponent who was tall, Julio Gonzalez. Said he didn't think Woods was quite as strong as Gonzalez, but that he might take a punch better. And Woods is able to swarm Jones against the ropes and land a couple of body shots. So already Clinton Woods has done more than Glenn Kelly did in Jones's most recent fight. and thinking you just allow Jones to operate too much yes, an this. interesting thing is gifted as he is Jones doesn't customarily throw a lot of punches so if you if you force him to throw more punches if you take him out of his rhythm maybe it'll gain you something you got to stay busy keep your height Woods is bending down a lot right to where Jones punches are <laughs> 
Is that where Woods wants the fight to That's be? That's where you want to keep the fight. When you when Roy Jones is against the rope, he doesn't throw any shots at all. are not heavy punches, concussive punches, but they are punches. In round two, Roy Jones threw 27 jabs. Not sure we've ever seen him throw more jabs than that in any one round. He only landed two of them, mostly sticking the jab out there short of Woods' face. Overall, Jones 16 out of 56, 29% in that round. Woods 11 out of 47. Big left hand by Clinton Woods. Sometimes an empty gun shoots. This guy's determined. Hard to fight guys who are determined. Talent means nothing. He is not it's psychologically overwhelmed the way Glenn Kelly was, that's for sure. No. Sometimes they say ignorance is bliss. Jones starts to open up to the body. He realizes now that this guy's going to take a shot. He's going to take body punches, pecking here and there before you go to the head so much. Great right hand, left hook to the body. Jones always has that habit of staring his opponent's chest down, even while landing punches upstairs. Jones's quickness and speed allowing him to pot shot Clinton Woods. <laughs> Working a little harder than Roy has been forced to do in many of his fights. This is where you can really start to hurt that right hand if you're not careful how you turn it over properly. The guy's got a strong chin and he's going to take a lot of right hand. Woods. Jones lands a big uppercut. Woods keeps coming. Jones lands the uppercut again. Left hand uppercut painting Clinton Woods. Woods can take a shot. Rips Jones with the left hook. They trade punches along the ropes. It's a real fight in Portland. Jones showing he can fight off the ropes as well as in the middle of the ring. There's something about all of the good fighters that are coming from England now. Lead right hand by Jones, momentarily stunned Woods. Woods got to be careful. You just can't let Roy Jones keep hitting on you round after round. You got to move your head some. Left hook lands flush. Roy Jones' his right eye is swelling above the eyelid. I think Jones might have caught him with the left hand. Might have caught him with the thumb. Left eye. Another big left hook, Roy Jones. 
Now, that's a jaw for your corner of Woods. What do you tell a guy to do? You told him to jab. All you can do is maintain your aggression. I don't think he feels like jabbing. Ain't everything he does, Roy Jones is waiting, and he seems to see and counters it. Jones really knows how to get distance from opponents where the opponent can't reach him, and with his quickness, he can reach the opponent. Only on the ropes does he seem vulnerable at all. Whoever fights him got to realize that he got to stay on the corner. Jones believes that he hurt Woods in the body again. He did, indeed. Woods is smart. You be the aggressor, but he's not afraid or ashamed to run when you have to. Woods is semi-staggered by the body punishment. Keeps his game face. Big left hook. That's the kind that pops your eardrum. That's when you got to keep your height if you would. Don't bend your waist over. Woods is hurting. Took a straight right hand shot right in the mouth. Jones grinned at it. This is a more spirited and consistent performance by Jones than we've seen in some of his recent fights against fighters the caliber of Woods. It was a must. Woods came out and made him fight. Jumped on him, embarrassed him. Caught a left hand that time. Yeah, it's a mark of Jones's greatness. And Woods is a lot better than a lot of people thought, so it's become a considerably more impressive performance by Jones than we might have expected. <laughs> you saw one that Roy Jones did one of his Gamecock gimmicks with his foot, and Woods mimicked him. Ten seconds! <laughs> and he'll pay for the mimicry. I'm not going to say that Woods is better than many of his recent opponents. He's just to put him away. But at some later round, Woods may have to retire. But in the two preceding rounds, CompuBox found Jones landing 59 punches to only seven for Woods. And that prompted Woods' trainer, Ian Alcock, to say, forget boxing. Which is something they could have said to him two and a half months ago. And that's the one thing Jones is afraid of. He goes out of the country somewhere, and he wins a fight, and it goes 12 rounds, and the judges, who knows how they're going to vote. I don't believe Got that. Us. I don't believe that, George. All three judges in this fight are, are not from America. And wherever he goes, he'll have neutral judges. You better believe it, Larry. Well, Larry's point is quite well taken in the sense that the judges are Gus Mercurio from Australia, Omar Mitten from Mexico, Jack Woodburn from Canada. You could be badly vision impaired and you'd still be able to score a Roy Jones fight. Yeah, but that's not the way it goes when you're away from home. You gotta get those fights over with. And you wonder how much of this Clinton Woods is going to want to take. Because now it's batting practice. And now Woods' manager, Dennis Thompson, throws in the towel. His manager knew his fighter and knew that he would stand there and take it all night long. And so his manager wisely stopped the massacre. Very good call. Yeah! Very impressive. Dennis Hobson from the scrap metal business into boxing a few years ago and made the right move there, stepping up onto the apron to protect his fighter. And uh, I wasn't aware of those judges being international judges. Roy Jones knows you better get out there and win it like that. Larry, you better understand you, that's why you'll never be a good boxing manager. <laughs> I don't know. Winky Wright fought 12 times in France and won every time. 
George Larry's not here to manage him. He's here to mismanage him so we can see good fights. There you go. <laughs> In the sixth round, by copy box numbers, Jones landed 21 of 31 punches. And that closed the show because during that time, Clinton Woods only threw two punches, didn't land either. That was enough to show Dennis Hobson that the humane thing to do was to protect his fighter, and he did it decisively. The reason that Jones had an opportunity to look so good was because Woods came to try to make him fight. It was he a good came fight. to try to win. Absolutely. All credit to Clinton Woods. Good fight. Clinton Woods went in there and did the best he possibly could. And after a while, that just brought Jones up to a level where he gave the fans a tremendous show. And it was a show indeed. Body shots, jab, right hand, left hand, hooks. Lead with lane. the hook, lead with the right hand. He can do just about anything. Crosses his leg when he goes forward after you. <laughs> There's Dennis Hobson over there on the uh, corner of the apron. And that's the moment at which the fight was stopped. And now let's go to Michael Buffer with the official particulars on the decision, or on the uh, stoppage. Ladies and gentlemen, at one minute and 29 seconds of round number six, at the bequest of the challenger's corner, referee Jay Nady calls a halt to the bout. The winner by TKO victory and still the undisputed light heavyweight Champion of the world, Roy Jones Jr. Final copy box numbers. Jones landing 101 more punches, throwing 134 more punches, doubling Woods' connect percentage. Those numbers for Woods, better than a fair percentage of Jones's recent opponents have done against him. Power punches, Jones 122 out of 201, 61%. Again, Clinton Woods promised to swarm him and attack him, and at least at the outset, he did just that. Ultimately paying the ultimate price, at least in boxing terms, TKO. Let's go to Larry Merchant with Roy Jones. Thank you, Jim. Congratulations, Roy. Were you determined coming here to the land of Nike where you work uh, to put on one of your more spirited performances? Yes, I was. First of all, I take this time out to thank God for blessing me, giving me the opportunity to come out and do this. God is so wonderful to all of us. Everybody in Pensacola, Keon one, main one, gate one, the whole crew one tonight, baby. But yeah, I thank God for giving me the opportunity to come here and put on an excellent performance like I try to do. Because being with Brand Jordan and I can make you want to come out and give them a good name. And hopefully in the future, other people will see that boxers can do other things besides fight. They can be good representatives. Woods was very, very courageous. He kept coming at you. Did you expect that? And that, that did that give you an opportunity to do the things you do best? Yes, it did. I expected him to come. I told you yesterday at the pre-fight meeting that uh, people saying this guy's a bum, but this guy had a big heart. You know, he Skillfully, he's not my level. You but said I, he was a bum. Well, I didn't say they say he's a bum, but I'm saying people say he's a bum. I didn't say he's a bum. I just said skillfully, he wasn't on my level. But I never would call a guy who has the heart to come in and put his life on the line, especially facing me, a bum anyway. So, no, I never called him a bum. And um, I told you the guy was very spirited and he had a big heart. And sometimes, if you're not conditioned, that heart will uh, overcome skill, speed, and everything else. You put on a big show before the fight. Give us your reasoning. Is showmanship now going to be more a part of your act? Yeah, it should be now because you know what? Excuse me. No, uh, no disrespect to nobody, but for a long time I laid back and um, tried to argue about people fighting, about the money, about making a big fight, and I decided now, you know what? If somebody wants to fight me, they can be no one contender. We can fight 75, 25. That's what the law say. Other than that, why should I be worried? Spend more time on making myself happy, uh, coming out performing for God. God bless me with this talent. Why am I letting the critics bring me to their level to argue, you know? All right. You mentioned number ones. Now you have a legitimate number one out there, number one in all of the various organizations. Antonio Tarver from Florida, who you fought as a teenager, 13 years old. Yep. Yep. Will he be your next fight? Well, the only thing that would stop that from happening is a, a John Ruiz fight. 
with the WBA heavyweight champ because people want to see how would I fare. I felt pretty good tonight. I feel like if I get myself in shape, I can do that. But only for the title is the only way I would make that fight, and that'd be good. But as far as Tarver goes, Larry, I don't mean no disrespect to nobody again. I ain't gonna get violent like I did last time. I'm gonna stay chill from now on. But you know, I was playing to fight Tarver when he fought against Harden the first time. He lost the fight. That's why we didn't fight. I had to fight Harden. So you're going to fight, fight him eventually. If WBA don't let me fight, uh, if I don't fight Ruiz, Tarver is next. All right. Now, from my understanding, financial. He lost the, the fight, so he lost his opportunity, but he got it again now. From my understanding, the financial arrangements for a possible fight against Ruiz have been agreed to. What are your considerations in whether you're going to go through with such a fight? Well, I just kind of want to see how the public is going to react to it because I want it to be a big event. If the public wants it, then that's what I'll do. If the public don't want it, then I'll go fight Tarver. But Tarver or Ruiz will be next, that's no doubt. So Thank is that what you're asking? Yes, I'm ready for whoever want to bring in their behind to me. Whenever, whoever, however you want it, you damn right. I want it. I forgot. You know what? I was going to be nice. Forget that. Yeah, I want it. Whoever wants to come in. And Tarva, y'all just don't know. I've been wanting to fight Tarva so bad. I've been dreaming about it in my sleep. Y'all don't know. He made me mad when he lost. I bet Brooks. Didn't I tell him I'm coming for him? I'm coming to get him, baby. Thank you, Thank you very much, Roy. Thank you. Again, congratulations. Oh, uh, some final thoughts. Um, whatever the whatever the critics say, Roy Jones will one day. Um, his bankers are very happy about him, and uh, one day he'll uh, march into the Hall of Fame. Of course. Another thought: uh, This is the uh, Jewish New Year, Rosh Hashanah. I understand it's the year 5763. It looks like we'll have Roy Jones around until at least I don't know. 63, 75?